there, I'm Dave James and welcome to a very special edition of Squabblecast. Batman, I think he has the edge because we think that if we train... Have the resources. Have the resources and the intelligence that we could theoretically become Batman. We as a culture are more inclined towards anti-heroes than we are straight up do-gooders like Superman or Steve Rogers. And the thing with Batman is that he has all this unlimited power and resources and at first his mission against the criminal underworld is very personal. It's driven out of vengeance, but further down the comics and the animated series and arguably the movies, he does actually become more focused towards fighting criminals for the sake of justice and for the sake of protecting his city. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to tell all your friends about me. What are you? I'm Batman. 1989 Batman. Though not strictly the closest representation of the character. Not really. Uh, it's still a movie I enjoy watching and, it, and for me it just takes me back to childhood. I can't judge it too harshly but I do feel like it doesn't do as much for me as it did for you. So I can still happily sit there and marvel at the production design. Exactly. Jack Nicholson having a field day. And even Michael Keaton holding his own. Yeah. I mean for, a, for, a, for an actor everyone thought was going to basically bring Batman back to camp, he, he played it straight. Indeed, even though he seems like he gets about 20 minutes screen time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he, he, and he, does, he does shine as Batman for what little time he has, even if I don't really buy his Bruce Wayne, because Bruce is supposed to be a billionaire playboy th philanthropist. I, I don't like his Bruce Wayne. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Could you tell me which of these guys is Bruce Wayne? Well, I'm not sure. Bruce is supposed to be the sane mask for Batman, yeah. but when you, when Keaton breaks down and challenges the Joker, you want to get nuts? Oh Go on, my! Let's get nuts. The I most like, un-Batman Batman scene. Really? That yeah. That's not Bruce Wayne. No. You want to get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. Tell me something, my friend. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? Danny Elfman's score for Batman is a fan favourite for very good reason and of course the, vi the visual style, cinematography, miniatures. Yeah, Anton first production design is amazing and it's important because he also designed the Batmobile. The best Batmobile. The best Batmobile. And of course all those iconic shots of yeah. the Batmobile driving through the woods at night framed yeah. by the blue lighting. It's the stuff of legend. It is, it it's is. It's what you, a lot of people want to see in a Batman film for good reason. They, they, they pulled all that off and I, I love the Bat Cave as well. It's very minimalistic, yeah, but yeah. appropriate as well. And uh, noirish. And very, trench coats. Yeah, there's that very uh, film noir edge too, which I love. I believe among the other actors considered were um, Mel Gibson as Batman, and even strangely enough, Bill Murray. Bill Murray, yes, yes. He had some interesting Joker choices as well. Tim Curry. Tim Curry, yeah. And get this, Eddie Murphy as Robin. Eddie Murphy as Robin, yeah. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's an interesting one. They tried to get Robin into the first two Batman films. I, I believe there's like a, a version of the, the scripted scene on the DVD where uh, Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy provide the voices. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me go! You bastard! Hmm, I like your boyfriend. He's kind of hot. <laughs> Take me. Let the boy go. <laughs> Gosh, I could kill you, Batman. But then you'd miss my party. And you, Batman, you're the guest of honor. It's definitely an important film, if not necessarily a great film. It's definitely important. I mean, the, the amount of impact it made when it came out. For, for, for yeah. marketing yeah. superheroes, for superheroes in animated format, for, yeah. for the comics to a certain extent. Well, that's it. Batman animated series exists because of that film. I, I respect it, I still like it, yeah. I, I'm still entertained by it, but I do yeah. f feel like it doesn't measure up multiple viewings, multiple no. repeat viewings. 
the lack of focus on Batman also yeah. kind of does it in for me a little bit. Yeah, you can tell where Tim Burton's interest lies, and it's not Batman. <laughs> it's definitely the villains. Yeah. Which, which is which it, is the key problem with in, Batman Returns. <laughs> oh, God. Here's the thing. I used to be scared of Batman Returns as yeah. a little kid, seeing it in my cousin's house. Overall, the bleakness was overbearing. Yeah. And while that turned a lot of people off, I think the real weakness for me is that it doesn't have a good story. No. But the Penguin wants to run for mayor, which is actually a plot from the 1960s Batman show. Now what are the issues? There is only one. Batman. Who is he? Who is this acrobatic clown who somersaults around Gotham City in a, a ridiculous costume? And of course, people act like it's dark and gritty when it's not. It's got no. a penguin riding in a Batmobile oh. bumper car. <laughs> That's not the Penguin. No, I mean, casting Danny DeVito on paper sounds like an ideal yeah. choice. Which he would have been fine as the erudite supposed businessman. Yeah. You can't feel sympathy for this Penguin because he acts like a monster in the face of the public and behind closed doors. <laughs> Still could be worse. My nose could be gushing blood. <laughs> Your nose could be... What do you mean by that? Back to work. Let's make a mayor. Catwoman, I think, comes a little bit closer in that regard. Again, Michelle Pfeiffer is a great casting choice, and you think, that should be amazing. But they instead, all? we get probably... Would you say that's the worst origin for a character of, of all time? No, because uh, because Catwoman in 2004 did that origin worse. It's like, what was the thinking behind this? Some cats come out of an alleyway and bite her. her fingers. Yeah. <laughs> and she, suddenly, suddenly... She's a Catwoman, Catwoman zombie, if you will. <laughs> and so, yeah, the thing is, Catwoman and the Penguin in the comics and cartoons are not crazy. When you catch them, you put them in prison, not in Arkham. There's anything that actually works in Batman Returns that actually feels like a source material. It's the stuff between Bruce Wayne and Selina Kyle. Mistletoe can be deadly if you eat it. Mm, but a kiss can be even deadlier if you mean it. I think the Bruce and Selina stuff in Batman Returns is better than what we got in the uh, Dark Knight Rises. I'm not going to disagree there. Which is a shame. <laughs> yeah. Which transitions to the uh, growing pains period of Burton Schumacher series. Yeah, it's like uh, kids are complaining and parents are angry that this uh, Batman film was so dark. As well as the fact that the story <laughs> just had no substance to it. No. Riddle me this, riddle me that. Who's afraid of the big black bat? In an uncertain world, in a chaotic time, justice wears a mask. the first of the two Joel Schumacher neon fests but mm. I actually don't hate it at all no I don't hate it either in no. fact taken as a sort of silly cartoon kids yeah. movie it's it's kind of fun it's it's the first <laughs> of these Batman films from the 90s to really focus on Batman as a character it's true Val Kilmer gets the most screen time out of the uh, four films yeah and I, with Val I kind of like his I like his Bruce Wayne even if his Batman is kind of eh. yeah yeah but uh, yeah, you get the feeling that he, he isn't that invested, but he's kind of coasting through it, but not really phoning it in. You called me here for this. The bat signal is not a beeper. Well, I wish I could say that my interest in you was purely professional. Are you trying to get under my cape, Doctor? <laughs> a girl can't live by psychosis alone. It's the car, right? Chicks love the car. <laughs> Uh, Two-Face's origin in Batman Forever is actually the origin in Two-Face. Yeah, we're not saying it's necessarily better executed, no. but it is comic origin. It's kind of dumped in there on, on, a, on a television. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh dear. Pretty silly. <laughs> Although it's interesting to look at the Riddler's origin in this movie and compare it to the animated series because it's almost beat for beat just like that of the Mad Hatter yeah. in the animated series. He starts off as a Wayne Enterprises scientist and eventually gets pushed over the edge and decides to make big for himself, but also putting him at odds with Batman. I kind of get a, I do get an occasional chuckle out of Jim Carrey's Riddler, personally. Batman will come for me. Batman? Batman, you say? Coming for you? <laughs> I'm counting on it! He's more on point than Tommy Lee Jones is. Well, Tommy, Tommy Lee needed to be the straight-faced, serious counterpoint to the wacky Riddler. I think if they, A, if they fixed that, and B, if they included the deleted scene of Bruce confronting his fears in the form of a giant bat, yeah, yeah. maybe cast someone a little younger as Robin. Who's your tailor? I took the liberty, sir. Ah, uh, what's that stand for? Batman and Robin. Oh my god. Probably the most pure camp waste of time in cinema ever. Yeah, you, you had Batman Forever, which wasn't a smart film, no. and then you dumbed it down even more. But it, it was expensive, and obviously what little money it did garner was not enough to break even. It's the most cheap-looking big-budget tentpole film. And even though Joel Schumacher wanted to make a dark and earnest Batman film, this was this was basically grabbed by the balls from Warner Brothers right from the start. They saw that the camper version of Batman made money, yeah. and they made, gave him even more mandates, yeah. despite making a successful film. Can you make it even more like the 60s show? It's not even more like the 60s <laughs> show, it's more like a, basically make it more toyetic. Yeah, that's, that's exactly, it is basically a 90 minute toy commercial. Now the secrets of the Batcave are yours! Unlock the Batman and Robin movie arsenal! Jungle Venom Poison Ivy itches to destroy the dynamic duo with a dose of toxic terror! Now gear up Bruce Wayne as Batman with punishing ice block armor! As he joins Iceboard Robin with spinning might and laser warp launcher! Then put Hover Attack Batman in the incredible new Batmobile and launch a poison pummeling attack! At last, evil is weeded out! The secrets of the Batcave are yours only with Batman and Robin! Figures and vehicles each sold separately. It's, it's almost funny in how unfunny it is. Yeah, the worst puns ever. Ice to see you. The ice <laughs> man cometh. You won't send me to the cooler. Let's kick some ice. Oh, that's the worst, man. What killed the dinosaurs? The ice age. Like, I don't think anyone was trying to make a bad film. It just happened to become a bad film. Yeah. It was Warner Brothers yeah. basically screwing themselves over and Indeed. overdoing the camp to such an extent that what they end up with was a complete farce, really. Yeah, which single-handedly as well killed their Superman reboot. Although, considering what we've both read about their proposed Superman reboot, maybe that wasn't such a bad thing. Yeah, definitely dodged the body, I think. If there's anybody watching this that, let's say, loved Batman forever and went into Batman and Robin with great anticipation, if I, if I disappointed them in any way, then I really want to apologize, because it wasn't my intention. My intention was just to entertain them. I think that's enough jibber-jabber for today. I think so. Until next time, man, you should come back. The Shadow, the Phantom. Ah, oh, the Shadow. The Rocketeer, Tarzan. If you like Batman, read some Shadow. That's all I'm saying. Gotham City always brings a smile. Rises. Wait till they get a load of me.